question is from Alec Cosmo. What is the best way to train abs? Isometric or concentric and eccentric? Okay, all, so all the, yeah, first break that down for people. Yeah, yeah so I so there's, there's three types of muscle contractions. Isometric is basically when the muscles just tense and holding a position. Example plank. Yeah, yeah so like like a, like if you were holding a dumbbell, you curl it, but now you're just holding it up there. Well, right? use an example for abs. Or a plank, plank a right? plank, yeah. right? So a con- use- concentric would be the muscle shortening, so a crunch coming up in a crunch. Mm-hmm. Eccentric would be the muscle lengthening, which would be coming out of a crunch. So those are the three types of muscle contractions. All three of them are important to train yes. with your midsection. They're all three important to train with any muscle. Right. It's just like any other muscle. It is. And your your body, you know, it gets better. The type of adaptations you get with training tend to be uh, more closely related to the way that you're training. And then there's some general adaptations that kind of come off of that. So if I train my abs isometrically only, I'm going to get really good at isometric contractions. I'll have a little bit of carryover to concentric and eccentric. And the truth, and it's true the other way around, you will get a little bit of general adaptation. Training all of them will mean you'll get better at all of them. Well, and if you want to see the greatest change, then the one that you do the least amount, you should put emphasis sure. on. So if you're somebody who does lots of planks, and that is your you know quote-unquote way you train your abs, and you never do crunches, then doing some crunches would be amazing. Or if you're somebody who blasts on crunches and they, they crunch, crunch, and they just let their body fall back, fall back, fall back all the time, but they're really good at crunches. They can do thousands of them, but they never like slow down the negative and resist it on the way down and focus. Do that. So it's like whatever you're doing the most of, or you do you gravitate towards the most, then focusing on the other ones are, are at probably the best thing that you could possibly do. Yeah. Now, as far as building the muscles of the abs so that they're more visible, um, those are going to be your concentric, concentric. and eccentric mm-hmm. you know, reps. That's going to be the, the full range of motion exercises where the abs are squeezing and then moving out into more of a stretch position. The isometric stuff, though, is phenomenal because you're, you want your core to be able to tense up yeah. and stabilize your spine for exercises like squats and deadlifts all that and overhead over. presses. Yeah, that follows you in, in basically all movement patterns. It does, so. it does. Now, generally speaking, uh, when you guys think about abs and the majority of people, what are what's some of the single best advice that you've given to clients in regards to that? Like, well, it, just teaching clients the difference between flexing at the lumbar spine and mm. flexing at the hips. Yeah. Um, I think when people do the, a sit-up... The, me- the mechanics of it. Yeah, right. I think when people do a sit-up or a leg raise, a leg raise is a real common one. Mm-hmm. They think if the body folds in half that they'll work in the abs. And in the abs, you'll, you may feel them even in that position because they may be stabilizing. But really, if you want to work the abs with full range of motion, it doesn't flex the hips at all. It flexes the spine. It takes your pelvis and it rotates it so that your tailbone tucks and you squeeze. It brings your rib cage closer to your pelvis. That's what they. Yeah. That's what they do. So, like a leg raise, some people will get in that leg raise position and they'll like just bring their legs up and their back is still up against the the pad and it's still straight back or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're not working the abs through a full range of motion. You're working the hip flexors. Yeah, and, and too, like in terms of rotation, because that's another component with that they're responsible for stabilizing. Like just having the ability to do both, like rotate with your hips with it, but then also anti-rotate, so your hips stay locked in place but then you're just your torso is responsible for that rotation so that's something else that a lot of people just are you know going through these things with momentum and they're 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 letting their body sort of dictate where they're going without having full control. This helps to kind of promote more control and and center that with your with your uh, torso. I love that we all were thinking three different things because I think all of them are extremely valuable. Uh, I think Sal's is first and foremost. Uh, understanding the mechanics of it is the most important. Like if you don't know how to contract your yeah, abs absolutely. properly, uh, all the other tips are kind of worthless. Justin, I love the idea of ran, uh, rotation and anti-rotation because it's probably one of the most neglected things that people focus on. And when you talk about longevity and safety and advanced totally. age, like talk about one of the most uh, important things to help protect your your back uh, is is focusing on rotation and anti-rotation. The third thing uh, that I would contribute that I, I remember giving as advice that even myself neglected was loading and heavy mm. ab work yeah uh, abs are so it's so common to see supersets and you know bicycle abs and you know 100 uh, can, you know 100 uh, crunches and mm-hmm. everybody thinks high repetitions the same like similar to calves people uh, think that that's the way to train them for the for the uh, the best results 
And in fact, uh, some of the best results that I ever personally had with training my abs or training clients' abs was actually doing five repetitions of slow, slow controlled. controlled, heavy loaded abs. Like, and because most people don't train that way, you tend to see incredible results from yeah. that. So, mm -hmm. man, I tell you what, if you're listening right now and, and focusing on abs, you take those three. Uh, those tips and probably see well we did a youtube recovery. video a while ago on uh, long lever crunches on a physio ball if you do those right you're going to do maybe 10 mm -hmm. if you're if you're strong probably right. less that's a lot of resistance with your arms like that yes far you back. do a good yeah. long lever crunch on a physio ball slow full extension so that you're at the end of it you're actually arching over the ball and rolling full contraction. rolling the spine like you're saying over it keeping the hips stationary so you're not sitting down with your hips squeezing mm -hmm. the abs keeping the arms up above your head that's a lot of resistance. You will develop muscular, strong abs with an exercise like that. The real high rep stuff, it's good for endurance, but it's not going to develop the, the muscles of the core. But I remember there was, a, there was a period of time there where it was like planks. Planks was the exercise. That's what yeah. everybody does. Let's just plank all day long. And uh, they have some value for sure, but you, you got to do everything. You got to do all of it, just like when you train any other muscle.